Hi, welcome to Air Called Anything. Today I'm working on my Acrasa motor. Um, I've only got a few jobs left to do on it, one of which is build some fuel lines. So today I'm going to be silver soldering steel banjo coupling to stainless steel fuel line. Just simply goes on the end and then you put solder on it, the solder draws into the joint and it seals it and you have a lovely looking fuel line. Or so the theory goes. I've only actually, I've got very limited experience, I've only actually ever made one of these before. I've made a very short line which runs from the inline fuel filter to the mechanical pump. That was a very difficult process. It took me several attempts to get it to work, to get the solder to draw into the joint. So I'm hoping I've learned from that. Um, did that a few weeks ago. Now we're gonna to attempt uh, to do this one. So um, the first thing to do, and I've actually already done this, um, is to clean the inside of the joint. So what I do is I, I get a piece of uh, 240 grit, uh, no, 320 grit um, sandpaper, roll it up into a tube, put it inside the fitting, and then just uh, twist it round, um, just to clean it out. Then you clean the end, you're gonna put the uh, coupling on, um, and I just sand that, and what I've done is uh, I've sanded it in the direction I want the solder to flow. I'm not sure if that makes any difference at all. Um, it kind of makes sense if there's micro grooves made by the sandpaper, it's gonna help the solder to travel in that direction you want it to go as opposed to if you sanded it around the outside, then you're gonna make a whole bunch of ridges which could obstruct the flow of the solder and the capillary action. As I say, I'm not sure if it makes any difference. So what I'll do now is we'll put this uh, piece in the vise um, and uh, we'll put the um, flux on and I'm using a high temperature um, flux paste, kind of like anthracite gray kind of color. Um, bought that off eBay and um, some silver solder. Apparently you're supposed to use 55% silver solder um, and I have no idea um, what percentage this is because there's normally a label on the end and the labels fell off. This has come out of my home plumbing box. So hopefully that's gonna do the job. Right, to the vise. So the first thing to do, taking a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush, we're just gonna paint some flux onto the tube, making sure we get some good coverage. I'm gonna put quite a bit on. I don't wanna take any chances that it's gonna um, evaporate. Then we do the same with the coupling. So we have paste in the coupling, then this fits on. And then we're ready to apply some heat. I'm, uh, I use uh, just standard mat gas. Silver solder at the ready, wish me luck. I'm just going to turn it round. You notice I was applying heat to both sides.
and I think that is that is that pretty messy and I've dripped uh, solder all over my desk well a little bit on my uh, worktop um, it looks pretty messy and pretty minging and you won't want to put that on your vehicle but um, we'll see what it looks like when we uh, dress that joint up so here it is a little bit closer you can see it's got solder slag all over it and flux burnt it looks pretty horrible so we're gonna have uh, to clean this up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through the wire brush um, and then I'm gonna hit the uh, excess solder with 80 grit sandpaper then uh, 240 grit sandpaper and then 320 grit sandpaper um, and we'll see how it uh, how it comes out So here we have it in the vise. Um, I'm going to be using first of all 80 grit, then 240, um, and then 320 grit paper. All I'm going to do is just going to take off this excess solder. So I'll start on the uh, fuel line first. So after running it through the wire wheel and sanding it, it's come out looking pretty nice. I mean, not the uh, the best uh, example of a solder joint you'll ever see, um, but you know, considering it's buried away in the engine, it's going to look fantastic, I think, and it will do the job. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So the next thing we could do is um, we could pressure test it with some compressed air, and it's really important. And I learned this the, uh, the hard way. Um, another one of my amazing mistakes is you don't want to use more than like two PSI to test it. So I could put it in a vise. Um, we could put some WD-40 around the joint, block off the banjo, put some compressed air in this end, about two, three maximum PSI and see if we have any leaks. Um, of course, the fuel doesn't get much uh, more pressure. I think the pressure from... Uh, a mechanical Volkswagen fuel pump is 2.8 psi maximum um, so that's all it needs to cope with um, obviously the proof is in the pudding once we fire the engine up um, the first thing I always do is I check for fuel leaks um, uh, once I get it running and then um, oil leaks <laughs> um, and then you need to fix any of those you have I mean, if you do it right um, and carefully first time round, you shouldn't get any leaks anywhere. But of course, you know, mistakes happen and you do get them. So these will all be checked once the engine is running. So we're going to pressure test. I'm going to squirt some WD-40 on um, the joint here. And then down the other end of the line, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of air, like two or three PSI. So it will cake on a load of this stuff. Block off the banjo. Give it one more go. Looks to be good to me. If that was leaking, that would be bubbling up like crazy. So it's a good job. No leaks. Right, so I have uh, soldered on the other two. Um, so uh, we did one of these uh, these two. Um, these are M12, uh, which connect the fuel lines to the carbs. And there's a bigger banjo, you can see it's bigger, M14 banjo. Um, and that connects um, the fuel tank to the fuel filter, to the pump, to the carbs. Um, also, I have taken off uh, the fuel filter, fuel filter and pump um, the small uh, one I made a few weeks ago and um, because that also has um, caked in flux so the idea is we're going to use the ultronic cleaner which I bought for 70 pounds off eBay um, already filled it with liquid it's water 20 parts of water one part of the cleaning solution um, and I used warm water from the tap um, in the kitchen um, which is really 38 degrees um, I've set it to get up to 80 um, and I've set the time for 90 so um, 
I put these in when it was dry and they tipped out. So what I'm doing is I'm just like leaning them in my cupboard, closing the door. Um, and what I might do is I might just put a rag under here to cut down any noise because when this thing, when I turn it on, you'll see when you fire it up, it's um, put the lid on partially. Um, oh, I should forget that bit. Um, once it gets going, it makes a hell of a noise. So set it for 90 minutes and we'll come back um, an hour and a half and we'll see if that hardened, burnt on flux has been removed by the ultrasonic cleaner. Nasty. See you in a bit. There we go, it's 90 minutes, um, and let's have a look, see if that crud has come off. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one of them out. Well, I can see inside, um, there's still some crud, but quite often it just wipes off. Um, if I get a toothbrush. And I put the toothbrush inside, spin it round. So what I'm doing is just putting the toothbrush in and spinning it round. Yeah! That's come up clean inside. So what I'll do is, is I will uh, take these inside um, and I will run them under the hot tap and just brush off all the gunge which is like just stuck to the outside and I've got to do that before it dries. So um, that's that. So once I've uh, run hot water through um, and it's all coming out clean, um, then the next job um, is to uh, dry them and then blow them out with some air just to make sure there's nothing in there um, and then I can get to the task um, of bending them. I can't bend the carburetor ones until the carburetors come back from the shop and then they're fitted to the um, inlet manifolds and then I can uh, bend those and uh, fit those. But that's all for another episode. Um, okay, well thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.